Do you want to make a yeast starter? Well, today we're going to look at how I make them and what the benefits to making one is. Welcome back everybody. So today I want to talk about starters. So if you're interested in learning maybe a little bit more or making starters for your first time, we're going to go over the basics of how I make them and what the benefits are to a starter. So to start off for a starter, you're going to need a flask. Then you're also going to need a stopper like a foam stopper so air can get out or if you want you can just use aluminum foil. If you're going to use a stir plate, you're going to need a stir bar. Then for the ingredients, you're going to need water. And what I like to use is dry malt extract. This is the light version. And if you want to, I will put a link down to my 31st Brewing Amazon account where I get mine from. I think for three pounds, it's around 12 bucks. So... The basics of a yeast starter that I follow is a 10 to 1 ratio. So for every 10 grams of light malt extract or DME, you're going to use 0.1 liters of water. So for a standard 1 liter starter, you're going to use 100 grams of DME to 1 liter of water. Now, I know because I've made them in the past, for me to get a 1030 gravity, I need 1.2 liters. So in the video that you guys are watching, you will notice I am above one liter. You guys should try this out yourself just to make sure the one liter of water to the 100 grams of DME is about a 1030. You want a 1030, 1040, somewhere in there. So then what you once you got your water in here, you're going to put your DME in here. Now DME is sticky if you're not used to making say an extract batch, it does stick together. So once you put it in here, you could have some clumps. So get a long spoon or something to stir it up. Usually what I do is I shake it a lot then I will turn this on the side and take a long spoon put it in there and mix it up until most of them are gone by the time it's done boiling it's gonna you know clear up any of those clumps or whatever so yes when I make my starter I always use firm cap before I start the boil firm cap is I think two drops per gallon I put two drops in here just to be on the safe side, firm cap will help it so it does not boil over or bubble. It breaks down the proteins or whatever, so that way it can't. I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, so yeah, once you get going, I boil for 10 minutes. Now, some places you'll find on the internet that say 5 minutes is enough, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I do all mine for 10 minutes and it's fine. I do it directly in the flask. If it's a good Erlenmeyer flask, you can go from hot to cold instantly and you should be good. So once this thing's about done, I do make an ice bath for it, put all the ice in the sink or tub, whatever you wanna do it in, fill it up with water, that way we can cool it down. When this thing is boiling, do not take your eyes off of it. Uh, because this is coned, once this thing starts boiling, and if you do get foam and all that, it will go fast. Because it's coned, it's going to rise faster than you think. Even with this one, at the 9 minute mark, the bubbles did get to the top, and I had to shut the gas off, let it settle down, then turn it back on. So once my starter is done, I do take it directly to the water. You know, I swirl it, swirl the water, leave it in there for a little bit. If you put the right amount of water in there, this will sit on the bottom. If you don't, then it could be buoyant, then you're gonna have to hold it the whole time. Usually what I do is I stir it for a couple minutes, then I let it sit on the bottom, go do something else, come back, stir it a little. Then once it's cool enough, I set it on the counter next to my yeast. 
So we're using liquid yeast because for dry yeast, the cell count is a lot higher, so you don't need a starter. But for the liquid yeast, I would always recommend making a starter. So uh, like I said, for me, 1.2 liters with 100 grams of DME will make a 1030, let's say, beer or wort, whatever you want to call it. And that's what I will use to make my base. Now, there are other things that you can do. So if you have a higher gravity beer, you could make a bigger starter, but I would say step it up. Instead of 24 hours for your regular starter, I would start about 48 hours before, make your regular starter, and then make a additional starter after that. Usually, 1060 is where I try and make a bigger starter, and what I'll do is I will go 48 hours, so say I'm making a beer on a Saturday, I will do it Thursday morning, I'll make my standard, let that go, then on Friday I'll make a half starter. So because I said the 10 to 1 ratio, we will do 50 grams of DME to 0.5 liters of water. So technically that would give me um, 1.7 liters of liquid in here. I would not go past 1.8 because this one right here is a two liter flask. I would not put more than 1.8. Also, I use firm cap, as I said. So the firm cap should keep all the bubbles down so that way you're not getting blowouts and going all over the place. Then what, I'll, what I normally do is I always make my starter to be 10 points less than my original gravity. So if you have a bigger beer that's about a 1080, I would not make a starter bigger than 1070. You can kick it up uh, if you really wanted to. If you have a 1050 beer, you could make your 1030, add a little bit more to it to get to that 1040 and dump it in there. Um, but that's just what I go by for a beer that's under, you know, that 1060, I will make a 1030, 1040 starter and that is fine. But if it goes bigger, I go to 48 hours and then I make half starters. I'm not going to tell you what my gravity is on a 1.7 starter because it does change and you guys should experiment for yourself because like I said at the beginning, I have to make a 1.2 liter starter to hit my 1030. If I make a one liter starter, it's more up about 1040 and I like mine lower to start out with. Makes the yeast happier, I think. So uh, if you're using a stir bar, and a stir plate, then obviously put it on there. I do mine on speed one. Now, depending on what kind of stir plate you have, you'll have to adjust to see how it is. You just want it moving. It doesn't have to be flying. If you're doing this by hand, then obviously I would swirl it every hour, every two hours. You're, you're gonna get cell growth. You're just not gonna get as much as if it was on a stir plate. So, yeah, I... The other thing I use this for is keeping starters. So what you could do is make a 1.8 liter starter and pour, say, a liter into your beer and then build that 0.8 back up to be a full starter. So you can, you know, save money by making bigger starters than once you use half of it, build it back up and keep doing that. Also, obviously, you can use this for yeast wa after yeast washing. If you wash your own yeast, you can just go ahead and put some in here and it's going to build up more. So you don't have to have as much yeast the first time because you can just keep on building that starter until the yeast starter gets big enough to what you want or the yeast cells have um, uh, produced more than what you need, then put that in there. So yeah, that's how I do it. Um, the dry malt extract that I use, I will put a link down below to my 31st Brewing Amazon page. If you wanna help support the channel, you can get your uh, 
uh, DME from there. I think it's uh, $12 for three pounds and that should last a while depending on how much you brew and how many starters you make. So hopefully that's been informative and until next time, happy brewing.